Listen, the school of Medina only declares very few things haram in terms of food. Everything in the sea is halal. And by the school of Medina, I mean the city of the Prophet. After the, after the Prophet, the companions, the successors and their successors, leading up to Imam Malik and his school. This school declares all creatures of the sea to be halal, including amphibians like crocodiles, tortoises and stuff like that. I'm not saying you have to eat them, but they're not haram. Including predatory beasts, uh, like things like wolves, lions, tigers, all of these things. Nothing is actually haram like that. Although people generally don't eat lions and stuff like this, but they're not haram. The only thing haram is in the verse of the Quran as Al-Qadi of Bakr ibn Arabi, the great uh, legend, a uh, Maliki scholar from Muslim Spain almost 900 years ago writes in the verse قُلْ لَا أَجِدُ مُحَرَّمًا عَلَىٰ طَائِمٍ يَتْعَمُهُ uh, When Allah says, say, I find nothing haram for somebody who wishes to eat except and those few things, لَحْمِ الْخِنْزِيرِ Pork has been declared haram, dead animals, so animals that have already been killed all those ma ohilla bihi lighayr Allah, those sacrificed animals that are sacrificed for pagan gods and things like that. So these kind of things, that's it really. And it mentions blood, but that's because the the pagan ritual was to drink blood uh, as a uh, as a kind of ritualistic offering. So these things were declared haram. Other than that, things are not actually haram. Okay. Now, uh, Mufti Abu Layth al Baritani uh, lied again, and this is the problem. There are some of the followers of Imam Malik who say that anal sex is permissible because Imam Malik said so. And when you really look at the sources, the correct sources of the authentic sources of what Imam Malik said, he said that they lied against me, for I do not say that anal sex is permissible. So basically, these people they're trying to lie against Imam Malik and say that, you know, use weak things that Imam Malik did not say and say, bring it back to Imam Malik. Now I'm going to go through detail of the hadith and we're going to go to the sharh of, uh, of, of uh, Ibn al-Qasim, the uh, Tilmid, the student of Imam Malik and what he had said from the authentic sources. First of all, we're going to go to the hadith in Muwatta al-Imam Malik. And the chapter is Babu Tahreen Akli Kulli Di Nabin Min al Now it, is, it says that it's in, in under the chapter heading that uh, forbidding what, what came in, in according to what came to forbid uh, for, to eat every kind of as, uh, every kind of the meat of the Siba. Siba means an animal that eats another animal or an animal that um, um, you know, sees its prey and goes and hunts it from other meat, right? Other uh, and eats the eats meat, right? So this is comes under the cat the heading of the chapter, forbidding eating the meat of those who eat other meats, right? So so we go right now to um, to the hadith. Now first of all, وحدثني عن مالك عن إسماعيل بن أبي حكيم now you can see here they have uh, you know they have the snad right from uh, Ismail bin Abi Hakim to uh, Ubaidah bin, bin Sufyan al Hadrami and Abi Huraira right they see Ismail here is thiqa trustworthy narrator Ubaidah here is also thiqa trustworthy narrator and Abi Huraira is a sahabi the companion of Prophet Muhammad so عن مالك عن إسماعيل بن أبي حكيم عن عبيدة بن سفيان الحضرمي عن أبي هريرة أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أكل كل ذي ناب من السباع حرام قال مالك now يحيى بن يحيى quotes Imam Malik saying قال مالك وهو الأمر عندنا this is our custom this is our way so the hadith says that the Prophet Abu Hurairah narrated the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said eating every type of uh, of animal that eats another animal or eats another or eats meat is haram is not permissible 
سواد مفتي أبو ليت البريطاني الملك البريطاني he quoted that he said that is permissible to eat uh, uh, you know crocodiles it's permissible to eat uh, uh, lions and etc these types of animals when the hadith clearly the Imam Malik said that he follows this hadith he says this is our custom قال مالك وهو الأمر عندنا that we follow this custom we do not eat any types we do not eat lions we do not eat uh, crocodiles we do not eat any types of animal that hunts for other animals and makes it its prey and eats it right so this is what Imam Malik says from the hadith. Now I'm going to go to the English one so to show you. This is Muwatta uh, Malik, right? Kitab al-Sayyid in the book of hunting or game. Yahya narrated to me from Malik, from Ismail bin Abi Hakim, from uh, Ubaida ibn uh, Sufyan al-Hadrami, from Abu Huraira, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, eating animals with fangs is haram. Which meaning that lions fall under this category, which means that crocodiles fall under this category, right? So what, what Mufti Abu Layth was saying is going against Imam Malik. Malik said, it says here, Malik said, right? This is the custom amongst us, right? As we can see in the other hadith, قَالَ مَالِكْ وَهُوَ الْأَمْرُ عِنْدَنَا This is our custom, this is what we follow, we follow this hadith, right? So first of all, Mufti Abu Layth al-Baritani uh, lied against Imam Malik and lied against his hadiths. And we go to Al Mudawan Al Kubra, right? Juz Awal in Kitab Al Said, right? So Al Mudawan Al Kubra, the volume one, right? This is the book, of course, for the Imam, the Malikis, right? Uh, number, uh, it's Juz One, volume one, number 541. Kitab Al Said, the book of hunting. If you scroll down, it says, وَقَالَ مَالِكْ Now, who's quoting this? It's Ibn al-Qasim, the Tilmid of Imam Malik. Ibn al-Qasim is the student of Imam Malik. He's quoting Imam Malik and said that Imam Malik said this. وَقَالَ مَالِكْ And Malik said, مَا فَرَسَ وَأَكَلَ اللَّحْمَ فَهُوَ مِنَ السِّبَاعِ وَلَا يَصْلُ أَكْلُهُ لِنَّهِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَنْ So, whatever hunts and eats meat فَهُوَ مِنَ السِّبَاعِ It is from the types of animals that have fangs, right? Or the types of, you know, as it says here, fangs, right? So, the types of animals that eat uh, meat, right? مِنَ um, السِّبَاعِ Meaning those who eat or who, who prey on their animals and eat them, hunt them and eat them, right? And basically the ones that eat meat. وَلَا يَصْلُحْ أَكْلُهُ لِنَهِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. So, and it is not permissible to eat because the Prophet Muhammad SAW forbade that. Who is saying this? Imam Malik. So his student, the, the student of Imam Malik, Ibn al-Qasim, is quoting Imam Malik. That Imam Malik said, whatever is hunted, right? Whatever, whatever animal hunts and eats meat, فَهُوَ مِنَ السِّبَاعِ It is from the types of animals that have fangs and deep predators, right? The type of predators, which are haram in Islam to eat. وَلَا يَصْلُ أَكْلُهُ And it is not permissible to eat. لِنَهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And that is, um, which is the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has forbade eating, right? So this is basically what it comes here. And we have proven again that people do not follow what uh, this guy, Mufti, uh, uh, Abu Layth al Baritani says because this guy has no idea what he's talking about. He's not a Maliki, he's a Muharrif, right? He's basically a guy who corrupts things, um, basically a guy who's misguided. He's trying to fool you, he's trying to get money from the Zionists, trying to make uh, say, Oh, look, we're gonna change Islam, we're gonna try to make Islam better. While Islam is already perfect and does not need perfection, we are the ones who are not perfect, we need Islam for perfection. So do not basically follow a jahil, right, who has a shahada, who gets a certificate and basically doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't know anything about Islam and basically just starts to uh, talk and talk and talk and doesn't know what he's talking about. So I suggest do not take ilm from jahils like the Prophet Muhammad SAW said that يُقْبَدُ الْعِلْمْ بِقَبْدِ الْعُلَمَاءِ in authentic hadiths in Sahih Bukhari Muslim. That the ilm is taken away by Allah taking away the ulama, making them pass away. 
until there is no more of the alim yattakhidhu an-nas juhalan right the people will take ignorant people fadallu wa adallu and these ignorant people will misguide and they misguide others and misguide themselves right so do not take it from people like this guy take it from the ulama go back to the sources go back to the books right because the books are available check the correct sources the trusted sources the authentic sources of the books and study it basically your own self don't just go say oh this mufti said this you're going to be questioned you're going to be responsible on the day of judgment for your own shortcomings allah will ask you will not you will be punished for your own doings allah will not punish basically you know you know he, he will punish the other person for him misguiding you more double but he will also punish you for why did you take something from something you did not know right why are you trust this person why did you not go search it for yourself so basically allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you you know if you're going to go and say imam malik said this said this imam abu hanifa said this imam shafi said this and you look at their proof choose the stronger proof that agrees with the quran and the sunnah do not because of course imam malik narrates uses sometimes the hif sources which are made weak by others right as evidence imam abu hanifa does the same thing imam shafi does the same thing imam ahmed ibn hanbal does the same thing so what you're going to basically do you're not going to listen to these ashari people or these uh, maturidis or these fi'a uh, dalla right who call themselves malikis because it's basically muharrifun they're trying to change things around and you should take knowledge from the books you should go and check the sources if you do not know say i do not know that's it don't take something you do not know don't do something that you do not know because allah will hold you accountable for that de- for that deed that you did or for the action that you did and remember as the prophet himself said said that the angels do not write down a bad deed unless a person does it when he does it allah says to the angels write it but if a person does not do it he has it in his mind he has it in his desire that he wants to do it but he does not do it for the sake of allah then allah will tell the angels write it as a good deed for him right so basically if a person has in his desire that he wants to do it, but he does not do it for the sake of allah then the angels write it as a good deed for him so now what you have to do is you have to take it from uh, you know authenticated sources you cannot take it from basically a jahil like this guy yani you khalif kul ra'i al ulama he basically disagrees with the majority of scholars or for every scholar says and he does his own sake and he calls himself a maliki saying that i follow the maliki school i follow imam malik while imam malik is free from him imam malik says the opposite of what he said so why is he doing why is he lying about imam malik Imam Malik never said this. Remember, he said in the hadith, "Wa hadal amr wa andan." Right? This, this custom is also is what we do. Is what we chose. Imam Malik shows that you know it's forbidden to eat any type of predators like lions and crocodiles and all these things that he's saying that you know they eat meat. So uh, Allah will hold you accountable from what you do because when you look at an opinion, you have to study the opinions of it. You can't just say, oh, Imam, Ma- Imam Shafi says uh, it's, it's uh, allowed, therefore it is allowed, I will do it. No, you can't do that. You have to look what the evidence of Imam Shafi is. If his evidence is not that strong, you don't take from it. If the evidence of Imam Abu Hanifa is stronger than Imam Shafi or Imam Malik, then you do it, you take from it because that agrees with the Quran and the Sunnah and that is the haqq, that is the truth which you must follow. and you're obligated to follow right so that's not an excuse to say that oh just because this sheikh says that or just we're going to choose the best and easier way to take that you were taken from a jahil you're taken from one who's who the quran the sunnah is innocent from him who is who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is innocent from him who his own scholars imam malik is innocent from him saying the opposite of what he says and remember it is your responsibility i'm going to end it here wassalamu alaikum